Money in the Bank 2024 featured the announced retirement of John Cena, a failed cash-in by Drew McIntyre, and Solo Sokoa pinning the WWE Champion Cody Rhodes. We have a lot to talk about, and let's break it down. You're watching Allison Analysis, the show where I rate wrestling shows using only emojis. Let's kick things off by talking about the men's Money in the Bank ladder match because this was a lot of fun. It wasn't one of the best Money in the Bank ladder matches, but it was fun. It did its job. It was thoroughly entertaining, and it was a great start to the show. It gets a subtle round of applause off me. But perhaps more interestingly, Drew McIntyre won the match. I predicted this exactly right, and we'll get into that in just you know a few moments' time. But I said Drew McIntyre would win, and he did win. And, I mean... I did predict it exactly right, but something that I just did not predict right at all was Sami Zayn versus Bron Breaker. Sami Zayn defeated Bron Breaker in a money match, right? The match can take my money. It was excellent. It was brilliant, thoroughly entertaining, but here is the issue. Bron Breaker should not have lost this match clean. He truly shouldn't have. I don't understand why he did, because this guy should be like a monster. He shouldn't be losing any matches cleanly for a long, long time. This should have either have been a DQ, or he should have won the title, or there should have been some, you know, real controversial finish. I mean, I thought it was way too early to do this match to begin with, but yeah, I think this was a complete miss, so I'm actually going to give the decision to have Braun Breaker lose a thumbs down. But the match itself, it was excellent. In fact, you know what? I thought about it a little more. Not only am I going to give it a thumbs down. In fact, I'm going to get rid of that rating. And I'm just going to put it straight in the trash instead. Because the longer I think about this, the more it frustrates me. It really does. Braun Breaker, this should be your Goldberg. This should be the next Brock Lesnar. Why is he losing to Sami Zayn, right? I understand maybe they're a bit reluctant to push him to the stars right away in case fans turn on him. But I mean, at the end of the day, this guy's a heel. Like, fans can turn on him. And I think he's, you know, got enough charisma and enough talent that I don't think he's going to have go-away heat. I really don't, right? You can be sensible about the posh without having him lose. But while Bron Breaker's career is only just getting underway, John Cena's is coming to an end. He came out, Trish Stratus introduced him, and he announced that in 2025 he is wrapping up his career, and he has since confirmed that he is working 30 to 40 dates in this year, and he won't be retiring at WrestleMania, but instead at a pay-per-view, a premium live event presumably, in December 2025, meaning he's going to have one last full year in WWE, one last run, and I'm thrilled we're going to get to see John Cena for one last run. I'm thrilled this isn't just one match. It's going to be one last run, and I can't wait for it, right? It's going to be a really sad moment when we, when we do see John Cena retire, when we do see him finally hang up his boots in December 2025, but I cannot wait for this last run, and it is certainly going to be interesting. The question out of the gates is, should he go and try and become a 17-time champion, or should he try and become a Grand Slam champion and go for the Intercontinental Championship? It's dividing fans' opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below, and we for sure need to discuss it in more depth at a later date. But the promo itself, it was money, it did its job, it was thoroughly entertaining. And yeah, John Cena, he always, you know, he always has you just listening to every single word that he says, and this promo was no different. We then had Damian Priest versus Seth Rollins, and this match was a lot of fun. There was a few kind of sloppy moments at times, but for the most part, it was absolutely excellent. And of course, Drew McIntyre cashed in, and of course, CM Punk cost him in the cash-in. I predicted this. I said Drew McIntyre was going to make it a triple threat match, and then Punk was going to cost him. And then, in, you know, inadvertently cost Seth Rollins as well, teasing, you know, laying the groundwork for a Rollins versus Punk feud down the line as well. I called it exactly how it happened, and I'm not going to shut up about it because a lot of my predictions lately have been very, very wrong, but this one I had very, very right. But more importantly, this match, this segment, it was so much fun, right? It can take my money I, I know some people are, you know, really angry that the briefcase was wasted as they put it. But at the end of the day, not all cash-ins can be successful. And this did a phenomenal job of advancing the Drew McIntyre and CM Punk storyline. So I'm going to be honest here. 
I'm not too bothered about it. I'll let it slide, right? They did a great job with the briefcase last year with Damian Priest, who, by the way, retained in this match. So I, I don't have a problem, and I certainly don't think the briefcase was wasted. But talking about money matches, the women's money in the back ladder match was terrific. Certainly, potentially, the match of the night. It can take my money as well. The only reason it doesn't get the higher bang or about rating is very simply because there was quite a few botches in this, right? But it was thoroughly entertaining. I couldn't take my eyes away from the action from start until finish. And the finish of the match, where Chelsea Green went through those tables was done brilliantly. She took that bump so well and it looked so dramatic. It was absolutely excellent. But it is now Tiffy time. Tiffany Stratton is Miss Money in the Bank. And there's no surprise to you if we're being honest about it. A lot of people predicted this, including myself. Uh, but yeah, this time I wasn't, you know, it wasn't a lone opinion from me. It wasn't an exclusive uh, prediction from me. Everybody was pretty much predicting it. It made a lot of sense. And Tiffany Stratton is going to be the next star in that WWE women's division. And I cannot wait to see where things go from here. The big question is, you know, whether or not Nia beats Bailey, Because, of course, we know Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton, they have a partnership on Friday Night SmackDown. So it will certainly be interesting to see. Then in the main event, we had the Bloodline. Solo Sokoa, Jacob Fatu, and Tama Tonga against Cody Rhodes, Kevin Owens, and Randy Orton. Firstly, I mean, I've got to give a shout out to Tama Tonga and Jacob Fatu, who looked brilliant in this match. Absolutely exceptional. And it was chaotic from start until finish. The ref bumps were a little confusing for me. Of course, Tonga Loa got involved, so that kind of made sense why there was one ref bump, but the others didn't really make sense. It was a little confusing, maybe a little overbocked, but still a lot of fun. So it can take my money too, right? It's money in the bank, and I'm giving out a lot of money. Uh, but it was it, it was truly a fantastic main event match. But of course, the headline from this, Solo Sokoa pinned the WWE champion, Cody Rhodes. And then after the match, said the fans, acknowledge me. I mean, it's clear as day we're going to be having Solo versus Roman Reigns very, very soon. Could Roman Reigns be returning at SummerSlam? In fact, you know what? I'm calling it right now. Roman Reigns is going to return at SummerSlam and confront Solo Sokoa. I mean, that opinion I don't think is going to be too unpopular. But yeah, I'm thoroughly excited. And of course, Solo Sokoa is now the first person to pin Cody Rhodes in quite some time. In fact, I believe since Roman Reigns, if I'm not mistaken. Oh no, Brock Lesnar did as well, didn't he? Uh, wait, did he or did he not? I can't even remember, but it's been quite some time since Cody Rhodes took an L. And this has certainly made Solo Sokoa seem like a great challenger for Cody at SummerSlam. But I think Roman Reigns at the event itself will have something to say about all of this. Overall, my rating for Money in the Bank is going to be quite predictable, right? Because I've almost given every segment a money rating. And I'm going to give the overall score of the pay-per-view a money bag as well. It can take my money. A really, really fun, easy-to-watch show from start until finish. A lot of twists and turns, and it really felt like a major deal. WWE right now are on such a great run. And I know not everybody is, you know, a big fan of these five pay-per-view match cards that WWE are doing right now. But I'm going to be honest, I love them. I think five matches is perfect. It was perfect back in the NXT TakeOver days, and I think it is perfect now as well. It is clearly what Triple H likes to do, and I like it as a fan. They're easy to watch, they go by fast, but more importantly, everything feels like it gets the time that it deserves on the card. And that is something that, you know, we couldn't used to say about WWE pay-per-views. So I'm absolutely thrilled now that we are able to say that. But overall, I absolutely love this pay-per-view and I cannot wait until SummerSlam. But I want to know all your thoughts. Let me know down in the comments below and I will see you in the next one. Peace!